Ramin for acknowledging um, some of my passionate efforts behind Groove and Wellness Online Studio is that I want to offer wellness uh, classes and events that feel dynamic and varied. And this is me walking my talk to the best of my ability as I can. I really would like to shine some light, not only on community members that are doing exceptional things around the world, but also to bring um, the spheres and the dimensions of wellness and movement and anything that falls under feeling better together. And some of these coffee talks, this is really the purpose for them. And the one, the purpose for this one specifically, I was explaining to Dr. Yaz, I wanna call him Dr. Yaz, I mean, he's earned that, um, is I, I know a, a lot of people have mentioned some concern or resistance around trying something new or to bring or rotate something new into their wellness routine because they may feel like they may not be the best dancer or they feel like maybe they lack connection with fill in the blank, whatever that may be. And one of these things was, how do we connect with music so that we can create movement that is not only enlivening for ourselves, but nourishing and that can actually come through as medicine. And I know, for a fact that in me seeking out diligently Dr. Yaz, I was finding the perfect guest for this topic. He embodies it, he lives it, um, he performs it, and I'm sure he also, in his privacy, also practices and lives this as well. And it just felt like this needs to happen. We need to put this out to the world. What do you do, Dr. Yaz? What does Val do? And what does the rest of the community do? So you guys have a chance to jump in and say something too. So that is why we are here. And I am located on Big Island. I'm in Pune. If you've been out here before, uh, you know it's a bit of a journey to come out here. And that's why I opened up the online studio so that you feel like you can access it and you can pop on out when you want and pop back in when you want. Uh, so this is one of the reasons why this exists. But I want to jump in and introduce you to officially to Dr. Yaz. Uh, he holds a doctorate from Florida State University, and he is a Florida State Seminole alumni, which I am too, and some of you on this call are too, so go Knowles. And uh, he has been developing intercultural competence within the English language teaching programs. He has over 20 years experience being an English language teacher, and he also has over a decade experience as a teaching educator. And you're going to learn a little bit more about this in a second, but I've personally dove into his website, Full Circle Language, which is um, offers teaching uh, services, learning and teaching services, and I'm just really stunned and amazed to see how he's brought all the things he's passionate about, and I, I can attest from my side that I find that hard to do. It's challenging because there's so much inspiration in the world, at least that I feel floods through me, and it seems like it may flood through him to bring it into a full circle of beautiful offerings. So I'm excited for him to share about that. And in addition to his academic work, he also facilitates um, intercultural edutainment. And I want him to talk about that word edutainment because I've heard it be used multiple times, but he's living this, like him and his band, the Maharaja Flamenco Trio, which you will also learn about, are actively doing this. Um, and the last thing I wanna say about his sound and what he can do to the world with the music and the instruments he plays is that he will take you mentally, for me at least personally, he's taken me emotionally and spiritually back to the outback. I've had an opportunity to live in Australia for a year. He brings the rhythms and the sounds of the Silk Road, the Caribbean. I was born and raised in Miami and I'm personally Nicaraguan. So for me, the sounds of the Caribbean and the islands is, is in my cells and I know he wakes them up and he's a native from Florida. So there's a lot of great things to learn about Rami. 
And he does really bring passionate sound through his heritage of Cuban Iranian and expresses it soulfully, passionately, and he really just brings to life wherever he is at. So we are in for a treat. And I wanna say um, this last sentence for him, a true global nomad, he currently lives and works both in the United States and Turkey. I mean, we're getting some vibes from Turkey. What more can we ask for? Um, I've taken the liberty of including in our chat a few links so that you can stay connected with him, learn more about his work and all that great stuff, along with some cool resources that he has shared with me and that I think could be fun for you to play with later on after our time together. Uh, so I want to pass it on to Dr. Yaz and just let him tell us a little bit about you and what inspires and motivates you. Um, and if you'd like, maybe it'd be great to start off by letting us know a little bit about Full Circle and how that comes into Full Circle with your musical career. So I'm gonna pass it on to Dr. Yaz. Thank you, Val. Well, you inspire me. And so uh, <laughs> thanks for that inspiration, thanks for that, that lovely introduction. Um, so, you know, uh, you know, just reflecting on on some of your questions that you sent me before, and and it's always nice to have these conversations because it allows for that that uh, that reflection, right? And that's the importance of having conversations like this, really, uh, that are centered around, you know, who we are, where we've come from, where we're going. You know, this kind of sharing. Uh, enables us to to kind of better see ourselves right as we are we're kind of expressing ourselves and connecting with others so i think that that really is at the center of a lot of of what i do um is to to encourage to cultivate you know to inspire the, these kinds of conversations these kinds of interactions it's kind of inner exploration and uh, reflection um, in order to kind of just pause and and see ourselves, see where we're come, where we've come from, what our stories, you know, what stories have uh, have led us to where we are now, um, but also you know understand that um, the story is always evolving, right? And we're we're creators of the story, and uh, we need each other. We need our to connect, you know, with each other um, because we're already connected. It's just kind of being aware of that right bringing that to the surface in an intentional way uh you know speaking that and that's that's just as important as the understanding that we're all connected but actually like acting on it and leveraging that you know to to our own benefit, which is of course to each other's benefit and so this is you know someone mentioned that that we're so honored to be here and take advantage of this this technology right to to connect with people in tallahassee jacksonville different places in hawaii here and it's now all over the world different time zones um you know different different levels of of uh being caffeinated and being awake and 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 so that's uh <laughs> and taking the time to then like get on each other's vibration right and frequencies so that's where the breath work comes in that's where you know being connected taking some time to to even connect across time zones and across the globe, we're doing that. So that's that's amazing, um, and we're taking advantage of those kind of tools. So, reflecting on on my background, as Val, as you mentioned, um, you know my my cultural background. I'm I'm Cuban on my my mom's side of the family. I'm I'm Persian Iranian on my father's side of the family. I was born in Iran. Uh, and I left when I was a, a child. We moved to Miami, to where you know all the Cubans live. And so you, this that that's where I my early childhood was is you know in Miami and growing up in my abuelita's house, you know in Little Havana and just you know smelling the cigar smoke and uh, Cuban coffee and just soaking all that in. You know I think that's like just I was like they they call me Little Ricky, you know from from. Uh, from Lucy, what is it? Uh, Lucy, I love Lucy, right? You had uh, Ricky Ricardo and and uh, his boy, little Ricky. So I was a, I, I loved to play music as a kid, and and uh, my my grandmother, my abuela, abuelita, she would, you know, I had pretty curly hair, 
but you know she always tried to straighten my hair out that old style you know kind of <laughs> uh classic cuban style but uh so i grew up there and then um and then we moved to uh you know in that household again you know Cuban household, my father being Iranian, growing up with Cuban food, Persian food, Persian music, Cuban music, just tradition, culture, language. Uh, I grew up in this multicultural environment. And, uh, and I, we, we as a family moved to Tallahassee, Florida, which is a totally different Florida. Um, if, if you don't know Florida, it, it's like, you know, they say, they say Tallahassee is like Georgia, you know, and, and um, uh, or at least Miami is just like, you know, the Caribbean and Latin America. It's, it's, it's culturally can be very different. And so I think that's where I really, I think being multicultural, you know, I wasn't always, you know, I wasn't pure Cuban. I wasn't pure, pure Persian. I wasn't pure, you know, whatever. Uh, it always kind of this, this topic of culture and language and identity was always a part of me, you know, growing up. And you know, sometimes it was a little bit of a struggle. Sometimes it was, you know, very advantageous to me. It made people curious, right? We have a lot of curiosity here. And so um, I think I was benefited from that curiosity of who is this kid, you know, with this, this last name and this name that was not common at all in, in, in uh, Tallahassee, that's for sure. And so I always kind of was tasked with uh, explaining things culturally, you know, and linguistically. And, uh, and, and I think that's been a big influence uh, to my interest as being an educator. Um, and my the work that I do as being kind of like an interpreter of, of culture. And so that's what, you know, kind of led me to, uh, as I was growing up to exploring culture in different ways. And so some ways to explore culture are, you know, obviously through language, so language learning. Uh, Another is through the, the music, you know, of the places. Uh, another is through the food, right, of these different places. And, and a big one, obviously, is through travel. And so uh, I was very eager to, to travel, uh, you know, once I finished with my, my undergraduate degree. I didn't really have the means to, to do a study abroad uh, when I was in college. So, I asked around on how that was possible, you know, and so I, I learned that there was a way and that was through teaching English. And so that led me into the field of, of language, right, and, and language teaching. And so um, I got a TEFL certificate and that was my ticket, you know, to the world basically. And, and I moved to Spain. Um, this is before any flamenco like band or anything like that, but I was into, I was into music and I was into, uh, I played trumpet growing up um uh, i was very passionate of music has always been a, a big part of just me just even like i don't know it's it's kind of like a friend that's always been there and uh you know has always kind of like saved me in a lot of ways uh having an outlet having a focus uh having a way to express myself so i grew up playing you know percussion i grew up playing trumpet and uh, I grew up playing playing um, later didgeridoo, and so we can talk a little bit more about that. But but the didgeridoo also is what connected me to um, my community when I moved to Spain. I moved to Madrid, Spain, and started teaching English there. And uh, that was you know Madrid in the early two thousands was a pretty cool place to be. I'm sure it's still a cool place to be, but it was. Um, you know, it, it, it allowed me to travel throughout Europe, throughout Spain, throughout North Africa, and just continue to, you know, understand myself better, understand, you know, my, my own identities a lot better, just living in another culture, another, you know, learning a language, struggling through all of that, you know, thriving through all of that as well. And then that's what really kind of made me realize, oh, wow, this is this is something that I embody. This is something that I'm passionate about is is learning, uh, um, you know, through teaching and um, and supporting others, you know, in their learning. Um, and so that's that's kind of what like set me on the path 
uh, of continuing on and getting my master's degree in the field and, and eventually my, my PhD as well and, and helping others who are interested in doing the same thing. I started a TEFL certificate at Florida State University because I wanted to give people that same experience, you know, of, of uh, having that ticket to travel the world, to, to learn about themselves. You know, we, we, tr we, we think that we're traveling to learn about others, and you do, but you learn so much more about yourself. <laughs> and so, um, so, you know, and that's been part of my practice as well of, of uh, uh, this intercultural communication, right? Which is basically the, the understanding that um, we all kind of see the world through our cultural lenses, right? There are stories that we've grown up with and, uh, and we all see them very differently uh, at the cultural level, as well as like the individual level. And, and with that understanding, then we can kind of see, okay, you know, how I see something can be the same, different, similar than somebody else, and the importance of having conversations in order to kind of understand, we, we assume a lot of times that we are understanding things, right, uh, in a similar way. But that's such a false assumption, <laughs> right? So because that's just impossible. Uh, we, we all see things just from our different perspectives and, and, um, and in order to kind of bring that to the surface and bring, be clear about how we do understand the world ourselves and our uh, developing understanding, uh, of, of ourselves and each other. We have to have these kind of conversations. And, um, and I find that it's, it's not natural to have, we, we're not, I'd rather say, maybe we're, we're not um, really brought up to have those kind of focused you know, conversations, those facilitated conversations around uh, identity, around how we see the world, around how we've been influenced, you know, uh, to see the world and, and also how we, you know, we choose how we want to write our story. So that's, that's what has inspired uh, my, my, my company, you know, my school, my, my project, right, full circle is to understand that, you know, one, the, the circle is this understanding of, of who we are, right, of um, just as that's that, um, you know, that Japanese kind of like swirl of the brush, right, of uh, understanding that, you know, this is like a, a, things are cyclical, okay, and that's true in life. So many times lessons come up until we kind of learn them, you know, over and over again. It's true in language learning, right? You, you, you learn things through like a, a process of trial and error, of feedback, right? And, and it also symbolizes community. And so we can come together in a circle like ours right now um, in a safe space, then uh, we're able to take risks, right? Val, as you're, you're you know, alluding to, right? The, the importance of, of being in a safe space to make mistakes, whatever, you know, and mistakes are a good thing. I call them beautiful mistakes because they are absolutely necessary to learn anything. And we have been, you know, falsely led through, unfortunately, our, our education system for the most part, that, you know, we get penalized, you know, for making mistakes. We get penalized for taking chances, uh, for being risk takers, uh, oftentimes for being creative, oftentimes for having multiple interests. You know, I know when I grew up, I was forced in high school to pick between playing soccer or playing music. And, you know, it was because you couldn't do, it was too much, too much extracurricular, right? And so we're often forced, you know, in, in certain ways, in certain boxes. Um, and, uh, and so I think that's, that's what also leads to our, our hesitancy to take risks, to try things, because we, get, we, we form, we kind of fossilize in these identities. Yeah. Uh, and, and it can be hard to break out of those. It can feel a little scary because one, we don't want to make mistakes. We don't want to look foolish. You know, as we get older, we form a, a stronger ego, you know, an identity. And, you know, kids, they're, they're all over the place. I was hanging on the beach here and this little Brit, British kid came up and started talking to me and my wife in, the, in like the five words of Turkish that he knew, you know? And I was so inspired by this kid because I was like, I'm that kid, you know, I'm learning Turkish now, right? And he was fearless. He was fearless. He came up, he was like, merhaba. 
nasıl sen, you know, tamam. Like he was just spitting out like the the five words he knew in Turkish and like, but he owned it, you know? And I was like, yeah, I'm repeat. And I was like, I was like, fuck yeah, man. You know, that kid was my hero. You know, that kid was my hero. Cause, cause you know, as an adult, I'm, I'm like, you know, as a, I'm like, here's, here I am, this expert language educator. I get embarrassed and shy and stuff like that, you know, with, with, you know, practicing a new language out in public and, and things like that. That's just part of just getting older. Um, we lose that kind of plasticity, that flexibility that, but, but we can work on it. And, uh, and I think, you know, the more we engage in learning and being curious and showing up to like spaces like this and dancing and doing things like, you know, like what you're doing, Val, you, you know, with dance, I mean, dance is a, is a big one. As a musician, I see so much the hesitancy that people have to dance, right? And they want to dance, you know, they want to express themselves, but somewhere along the way, they were, you know, said that you're not a dancer, right? You can't dance or, you you know, you can't dance in a certain way. And it's so sad, you know, because they're, they're, of course, you know, they're enjoying it and whatever, but you can see this, like they're holding, you know, themselves back. And they love it when, when people are free enough to kind of get up and dance and they're kind of live vicariously through the dancers, you know, but it's a lot, you know, it's a lot of a process and that's no way a criticism at all. It's, it's just, it's just an observation. And, uh, and so I think things for me personally, I would say, uh, you know, things like Nia, having things facilitated, guided, you know, being free, having just, you know, feeling embodying, you know, movement, uh, listening to the music, listening to the space to, to yourself. I mean, that's, that's powerful, you know, for me, I, I was just saying that I, I, uh, my wife and I did, um, the, the Nia class with Val, the virtual one with, uh, Felices Diaz. And that was so much fun. Um, it really was. You know, it, it's so much fun and it, it allowed me to experience that music even in a different way. Right. And so, uh, so yeah, that's, that's a lot, you know, there's, there's a lot or a lot more, but I think that's it in, in kind of a nutshell. In an essence, you yeah. know, there is a thank you for for sharing all of that. And, and for all of us who are tuned in, know that even when we know people and we commune with them and we see them and we support each other's initiatives, there's still always like this beautiful space of mystery where we want to learn more about somebody else. And um, Margie used the word still curious. Susan, that's here live on Zoom, also used the word, I'm very curious. Curiosity is a beautiful thing. And I don't, I don't know where this is going to take us, by the way, because um, Ramin and I are, are very much about, let's just get in tune with what comes up. But the word curiosity is coming up a lot. Embodiment is coming up a lot. The process of learning and the willingness to want to be okay with being wrong, making beautiful mistakes so that you can learn more about yourself, which helps learn more about everything else that informs your world around you. And then movement, how all these different things can weave and interlace with each other and how, how they make a difference in our well-being and our wellness, how the state that we carry ourselves in. And the way I kind of want to lead into that is because I'm very curious, here's where the mystery is at too, is how do you, um, Ramin, as a percussionist and a, and a human being that's extremely talented in, in my eyes, that's how I see it. You're a very talented human being. You play, <laughs> I'll let you say the Rolodex of instruments that you have a relationship with that you know how to bring to life. And how do you find this element of curiosity assisting you or helping you navigate your journey through life as you pick up an instrument and you learn to play with it, you learn its dimensions and what it can bring to your inner world, how you sense it in your body when you start playing that instrument and what does it do for you when you get to project that and share that from a sensation standpoint, just from what you can sense through hearing, seeing, seeing, smelling, touching. What is that 
journey like for you when you pick up an instrument and you are full of curiosity perhaps initially because it's new to you it's a new to you skill and then where do you, how do you find that place where you start embodying and being in this response and give and take relation with an instrument i don't even know if that's like a full clear question but that's what came to me <laughs> what do you got <laughs> yeah so so i hear i hear kind of two things one is um you know one one thing that i hear is is like again like you know the weaving of 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 who i am um and and I think that gets back to your question about edutainment. And I'll say that, you know, for a long time in <clears throat> especially my professional career, I think like a lot of I kept a lot of my identities like separate, right? So I was like the academic, you know, um, in one world. And then I was like this musician, you know, in another world. And uh, um, and we can tend to I felt anyway, I, I I felt like I was like segregating, you know, my, my identities and because probably out of fear for some, you know, maybe I like was fearful that in my academic world, if I, you know, brought in too much of my, my musician, you know, identity, then maybe I wouldn't be taken, you know, so seriously, these are the stories, you know, that I was telling, no one ever said that to me, but this is a story that I told myself. And, and then maybe in my musical world, I didn't see like how my academic, you know, interests would really benefit that or its place, you know, there. But I, I always kind of, you know, of course, things leaked in, you know, and, um, and I always got the best response when I could weave, you know, those, those kind of identities and until I, you know, really made a more of a conscious effort to be like, you know, look, these, this is who I am. These are my skill sets. You know, how can I leverage these different like passions that I have, you know, these different identities of who I am, because when you try to show up, especially as an educator, uh, someone who's facilitating space, someone who wants others to like open up fully and take risks and, you know, share who they are, you better be, you know, a role model of that. Right. And so, um, so that really motivated me to 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 do that and to do that intentionally to try to do that in a way that uh um again you know not only kind of like was just talking about myself but but doing it for a reason and and so that's where edutainment kind of came right and i actually heard that that word originally from krs1 right who's an who's who's he's he's like edutain i mean if you don't know who krs1 is krs1 is uh one of the founder founding fathers i would say of hip-hop and um he's not only an amazing uh rapper uh but he's also just an brilliant genius of a person and so when you see krs1 perform he says he's the professor, right? He says, come to the teacher, right? And so he's teaching, he's giving a lecture, you know, in, in rap form and very clear, very succinct. And so that's why I was inspired by this edutainment idea. And so, you know, my work as an educator, um, I would bring my, my instruments, you know, into the classroom. And especially when I did a, I did a fellowship with the US Department of State in Vietnam I, I was a U.S. Uh, language fellow, and it was basically like a cultural ambassador there through through education, through through language teaching, and um, and I brought a didgeridoo with me, and I brought uh, and a percussion instrument, a, a handpan, uh, with me, and I would do um, besides my work at the university there in, in Vietnam, I also would do uh, cultural events at the embassy and at the American Center. And a lot of it had to do around, it was centered around music and, um, you know, using music to understand, in this case, it was the United States and Americans, but really like the multiculturalism, the, the identity of the United States, you know, which is multicultural. And uh, I think Americans, you know, we tend to, US Americans, we tend to forget that sometimes, that we are a nation of immigrants, that we are multicultural that uh, that is, you know, our strength, you know, and our richness is being a nation of immigrants and uh, multicultural. And and I think that actually um, makes the United States 
more more accessible, more you know, in a way that people can identify because they can see themselves. You know, when I was in Vietnam, I would show pictures of Vietnamese communities in in New Orleans, you know, in Louisiana. And they had the same kind of markets, you know, that you would see in Vietnam when they were just, their mind was blown, you know? And so, and, you know, I would, I would, so, so again, it's just leveraging, um, I guess what I'm trying, what I'm getting at here is that, you know, when you leverage your passions, you know, and, and what you're into, uh, and you can apply them in, in any field or, or path that you're doing, you're being your authentic self. When you're your more authentic self, you have more energy. Um, you become more interesting. You stand out. You know, you shine right uh, more. And and that's what the world needs. You know, the world needs that that kind of like inspiration. And when we do, when we're in, when we're inspired in that kind of way, it's easy. You know, you can talk about things. You know, you you feel you just have a different energy through your voice you know people feel that energy they feel inspired to share and open up so um so i've been able to kind of i have that on my website this edutainment uh because it's it's just a beautiful way to to get get past the kind of um typical way you know of like presenting or having an event and and now even with our concerts with the, the trio, uh, the Maharaja Flamenco trio, we're all educators. You know, I'm, I'm an educator, Silvio, the guitarist, uh, founder of the band. He's an educator. He's the guitar professor, University of Florida, amazing guitarist, you know, one of the world's best classical guitarists. And he's a professor there. David Cobb, the, the bassist in the group, he's an ethnomusicologist. Um, just an amazing basis, but just amazing uh, academic and mind, you know, brilliant mind as well. So in our concerts, if you come to a concert, you know, we do a lot of uh, engagement with the audience, um, but we also offer like workshops, right? And educate, we love educational events, like even be beyond the concerts. Uh, and my favorite is with, we just did this tour. We did, a, um, it was in North Carolina, it was in, um, I think it was Greensboro, North Carolina. In one day, we did an elementary school, a middle school, a high school, and then we played for the community all in one day. And wow. it was epic. It was so epic, you know, because we got to see all those generations, all the community, you know, all the beautiful community from the little ones, you know, up to like the elders. And uh, so that's the kind of thing that's what embodies edutainment, you know, for me is is blending this understanding of like our intellect, right, our curiosity, um, our knowledge, right, our different skill sets, you know, or in this case, it's music, our artistry, our creativity. And when we can kind of blend those together, when we can blend, you know, uh, connect through different senses, as you mentioned, Val right through these different senses through 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 speech but also through music uh through expression through energy uh through hands-on participation right through question and answer kind of like conversation dialogue uh that that leverages the music in a way that it's meant was recreated and music was created for for that very purpose <laughs> it was to it was for community it was for exchanging of, of knowledge right it was for passing on like wisdom and for creating new ideas you know and inspiring new ideas and so um and that's that's you know those new ideas could be through dance right so dance is like you know an expression of that as well of 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 rhythm of the rhythm of time of the seasons of of our cycles and our lives you know and, and kind of like embodying that through through the music um is is uh is an honor and so that's what music is for me it's not it's something that really is it's it's it's, I feel like it chooses, you know, it's like the didgeridoo, it chose, it chose me, you know, and that's, that's what I feel. I feel like it's, it's, it is, it's, you know, the Aboriginal um, philosophy of, of the world and understanding of the world, um, you know, things have spirit, you know, things have their own intelligence and, and, and when I mean things, it's like, you know, 
a river or the mountains or the land or, you know, uh, the didgeridoo. Um, you know, all these things carry um, a desire, a dream. That's what they call like dream time. And so, you know, we all, we all are beings and we all dream, you know, we all have our like intentions and our visions about things. All creatures do that, right? Everything is dreaming. Everything is like creating realities and that can involve each other. Um, and so that's what life's really about is like envisioning, creating, realizing the vision and knowing that it's like a continuous process. And so that's what the didgeridoo I feel like has, has, you know, provided for me is that kind of understanding, tapping me into that really that ancient wisdom uh, through the Aboriginal peoples. And, um, and also understanding that we all have part of the story, you know, that no one has the whole story. And that gets to the Aboriginal philosophy of song lines. And so song lines is the understanding that, you know, even within Australia, the Aboriginal peoples of Australia, because much like the indigenous peoples of the world, you know, let's say of, the, of Hawaii or the United States or whatever, they, um, there are many, many hundreds, you know, of, of different like cultures and languages and, and, and systems. And it's up to us to understand that you know, we have a part of that story, but we also should go and communicate and learn from others because they have part of the story as well. And so when we can, you know, talk to others and be open to listening and, and sharing, then we get a, like a bigger understanding of the, the great mystery, right? We never have the whole understanding, but we can start to see the picture a little bit better. And, uh, and that's what we do, you know, that's what the music for me is, is um, an education and just the work that I do is to, for me, I'm curious. <laughs> it's really for me to learn, you know, I'm actually, I teach and I do these things because I'm, I'm curious, I wanna learn. You know, the best way to learn something is, is to teach. The best way to get better at something is to like have to present it or perform it. I'm a lazy guy, like practicing, forget about it. But when I have a performance, I'm like on it, you know? So it's- uh... A plus plus. <laughs> <laughs> so, so yeah, you know, and, and to get to that, to that second part of the question, as far as like, how do I go about, you know, um, developing that, you know, the, my, my, let's say my, my skill set, you know, on these instruments. Um, Again, it's the curiosity, you know, that's the biggest motivator. Um, and then it's uh, that curiosity just drives me to like through like the difficulties of learning, you know, how to play the instrument. Uh, it drives me past like the, the, the shyness, you know, the vergüenza, right, of like uh, of, of making mistakes. Um, so I think like for me, when I have a passion for something, it just kind of like provides that that intrinsic motivation, um, and then community. It's meeting people who have similar interests, and for drums, for percussion, it's you know just jamming. You know, it's for music. It's like jamming out. It's just getting together with other musicians, playing, um, learning from each other, and and continually just kind of like playing for the sheer enjoyment of it at first. <laughs> <laughs> and 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 then when you actually have to like play with other people who are like super skilled musicians like my bandmates you know um <laughs> you got to learn you know you got to learn like you got to learn stuff right it's, it's like you got to learn songs and structure but but within that structure and flamenco is like this and it's so beautiful like this is that you have structure but there's a lot of jamming and freedom like in that structure too right so um i think that's that's one reason why i really love flamenco as like a a, a musical art form is it's kind of like uh, jazz in that way you know where you have a structure you have certain rhythms that's your compass like in in uh in flamenco uh compass that's your compass right your compass and so your compass is like your compass it's the rhythm it's like where's the where's the beat coming back home 
And once you kind of know where home is, right, the heart, then you know that you can like explore and that you always are grounded in that, in that compass, you know, in that beat that's going to bring you back. And everyone knows that, that's, that's playing. And so you're connected around that compass, you're connected around that, the home, around that heartbeat. And, uh, and so that's where the magic is, you know, so that, that's where the, the security is that allows you to be, you know, take chances and risks and explore. And the willingness to learn, to pick up the instrument or to show up to X, Y, and Z and take that chance and be bold and let that curiosity actually propel you into motion and action, such as those who, who chose to be here and share space today, whether you're doing that live or in a recording. And um, I want to, to bring full circle what you, what, at least what I felt resonated for me, and I do want to give an opportunity for our um, community if they do want to ask um, any questions at all. I do want to be mindful of people's times as well. I don't know if you guys know this, but it's actually almost 11 p.m. in Turkey for <laughs> Rami right now. He's an all star. But there were some words that you said here about music and how music becomes. Um, the way I received that was how music is the basis and an invitation, an opportunity to learn, not only learn to learn, but to stay curious, to stay active, and maybe even a little asleep around certain things that music brings into your life, because story is never identical. Story changes based on who's actually sharing the story too. And this made me think about for, for us listening and tuning in and digesting all of this, in essence, I would like to, to say that I feel music and movement are an invitation to a story. Now, whether this story is an overarching story, which it may be as community when they come together, there's also your own personal story that you can tap into through the use of music, through the use of movement, something that is cellularly imprinted in our bodies to want to do because the body is looking for stability and mobility to find homeostasis and to find beautiful balance where you feel good living in your life and in your body. Um, and then you also brought up staying curious with structure and freedom. And this I will shamelessly tie it into Nia um, because I do know that this is foundational for coming to Nia dance classes. And that's that you get to choose choices there what do you want to have more structure with? What do you choose to elect as structure? And how are you gravitating to that and practicing it when you come into classes or when you pick up an instrument or when you go into a concert? And then where's your freedom? And how do you play in that freedom to learn differently? I, I, I learn differently under structure as I do when you tell me, hey, here's a, th here's a topic and you're free to play with that however you want, or here's a topic and here's a little structure. But how nice is it to have a both? And uh, Nia does offer that in, in its essence, it, it is foundational. And it sounds like this, I don't know if to call it pattern, but this blueprint exists amongst all of us. And it sounds like it definitely exists within you. And it's this story and the curiosity and the interest that I, I, my words were, how did you know to pick up the Australian Aboriginal didgeridoo or whatever instrument, but you actually said something that I love and you said it chose me. And that is pretty powerful. Um, and whether we're awake for it, for the invitation to take that opportunity is kind of the hopes that I had around this talk is if you're on the verge or on the fence of picking up that guitar or signing up for that class or you know whatever it is that you want to manifest to create this reality that we're dreaming to put it into action maybe find some momentum and inspiration and um, i love the idea of the compass um, and i especially love that you brought it back to the beat 
and the music of your heart. And that the heart in itself is actually within our core of our body. So I personally experienced music hitting me in my core first. And that that's probably one of the millions of reasons besides the fact that our nervous system hub is there and we have a, a beautiful seven energy sacral system that's also responding to silence as much as sounds. Um, but I love that you said that it made me really visualize the core of my body as a compass, no matter where I go, at least having this reference that I can come back to this and that this is true and real um, in my reality and in my life right now. Um, I don't know if there's anything you want to add to that or if we want to ask if anybody has anything they may want to share about that. I know Susan danced live yesterday to Felices Diaz and she killed it. She was awesome. <laughs> but um, yeah, there's so much. I feel like we could munch on this for five hours. Oh yeah, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm, and my apologies for being so like long-winded, you know, that's, no, that's from- No, it's passion, it's passion. When, when, when playing didgeridoo, you know, it's you're long-winded, you know, so, it, <laughs> but um, yeah, I'm I'm, def I'm definitely open to any questions. I will say I'm going to share this link here too in the in the um, chat, and if you all want to um, copy that later. But it's a really beautiful story that's relevant to us here, you know, especially as as you know through dance. And this is a really beautiful Dreamtime story, Val. I don't know if you want to bring that up actually. Yeah. And yeah, share, yeah. 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 Share that link and um, and I'll show you. This is actually on a, a blog that I wrote. Um, and it has to do with uh, Felices Diaz, the, the cover art, which is a sandhill crane. And um, so we chose that sandhill crane um, because when we were recording the album, we would see, and this is a picture if you scroll up a little bit, this, this video here, these are these three sandhill cranes that we would see every day when we were recording the album. And uh, we recorded the album in Micanopy, Florida. So that's a very you know wild area there, Payne's Prairie um nature reserve and so these sandhill cranes and i remember i was like you know the sandhill cranes is a, is a strong totem for the aboriginal people and they call it brolga okay brolga and so um you see the sandhill cranes if you if you uh scroll up a little bit val um yeah that there you go okay and there you go where it's in italics so oh, oh. um it's okay. Yeah, there you go. So in italics yeah. there, this is this uh, dream time story. And it's a, it's a well known dreaming about Brolga or the sandhill crane. And so Brolga was this beautiful girl, okay, who was obsessed with she just loved to dance, right. And um, this shaman in her community, she he was obsessed, you know, with her. Uh, and he wanted her to, to marry him. And but she wasn't having it right and because she just dancing was her love and her passion and uh, that's what she wanted to do and so. One day while she was dancing alone, the shaman turned himself into a, a kind of whirlwind right they call it a willy willy and um, into this willy willy uh, whirlwind and to sweep her and to take her away and so great spirits saw what was happening. And Grace Spirit loved this girl so much that she was just so much into her passion of dancing and she was using dance as a as her way to just communicate and express herself. That Great Spirit turned this girl into a sandhill crane so that she could fly away and so the community there um, recognized this and so when you know, even the girl, though the girl was gone, they saw that the sandhill crane visited and they saw and they understood that that's who she was, that the sandhill crane was her, you know, kind of reincarnate. And so um, the Brolga, the sandhill crane for the Aboriginal peoples is this, this, this totem of um, one of like strong femininity right of, of going for your dream and expressing yourself you know specifically like creatively um uh and and this understanding that you know if you want to achieve your your goal uh you have to invest the time you know you have to just like dedicate yourself to it and so this this um you know investment of of time of energy 
um, into like self-expression is what uh, is what the brolga symbolizes. And so that just became like the perfect symbol for um, for our album, uh, because that was the sign, you know, it was of creativity, it was investing a lot of time, energy. Uh, <laughs> and and so, you know, the brolga is like a dance that where the didgeridoo, along with clapsticks uh, and song, they tell, they retell the, the that, that story, that dream time story of brolga. And uh, in order to to communicate the importance of of really of self expression, right, and and belief, believing in yourself, and knowing that you know even if it's not accepted in the community, you know, um, if you if you just dedicate yourself to a great spirit is watching, and uh, and you know you you're honored, you know, in that way. That is that was so important to be said. <laughs> so many things wow <laughs> thank you for sharing that and i do know i want to acknowledge um from the top of my head because there were a, a handful of people that are going to be catching this recording um a few of them are uh nia colleagues in australia and i definitely believe that there was a huge appeal because i had shared with them the fact that you played um not also uh, the australian aboriginal didgeridoo but also i had shared the cover album and, and i don't really know how much connection they had created but i certainly know that them um, living there and listening and dancing to a lot of nia sounds that do include the didgeridoo must must have sparked some some appeal for sure so hi yeah. on and julie sending love and i'm just delighted that ramin has brought us full circle again <laughs> <laughs> absolutely That's so great yeah love and if, and if you all if you explore this blog uh, later if you scroll down there's actually um Keep on going down. Uh, there's actually this really beautiful uh, dance um, theater uh, in Australia that um, that interpreted this uh, dance, this brogla dance. That it's it's just beautiful. So this is the the Sandhill Crane, um, the brolga, and uh, they're bringing it to the stage here, and some beautiful music, some beautiful Aboriginal music as well. But uh, you can you can check that out. That's wicked. Is this the blog for um, Maharaja Flamenco Trio? Yes, it, it seems is. like this is it their is. website. And the, um, I've provided in the chat the links and I will also follow up with them. So you guys can check all of this out on your own time too. I certainly will. And Ra uh, Rami and I appreciate greatly you being what I heard somebody call you a walking Encyclopedia is that, that those were the words that Jose Val Valentino, correct? Is that the <laughs> I, I believe he helped produce the album and in the documentary yeah. about creating this album, Felices Dia. I will also include that link in the follow up. If you want to watch it, it's certainly worth watching it. Um, and it's short. Um, he called you a walking encyclopedia because of your relationship with so many outstanding instruments. Can you actually just say a few that you play? Just shout them out. Sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so you know, in this band, um, actually, cajon is the the principal um, percussive instrument. Um, cajon is an Afro Peruvian. It's an African instrument uh, that's also played in Afro Peru and Afro Cuba. And um, it's uh, basically a box drum um, that later came into with flamenco. Um, I also play didgeridoo. Uh, like I said, it's an Aboriginal Australian instrument. Um, I play handpan, uh, which is a beautiful UFO looking drum that you'll see in some of the videos, a uh, beautiful melodic drum. Uh, I play darabuka, right? Uh, Dumbek, it's also called. And that's a goblet uh, style drum played in Turkey in the Middle East, you know, in general, North Africa. Um, I play Bendir, which is a, a frame drum. It's actually a Turkish frame drum. Um, uh, I go, oh, I mean, you know, percussion is just, that's what's beautiful about percussion is that it's also a, a way to travel the world, you know, by playing different percussive instruments. So, um, you know, congas, djembe, you know, all kinds of just di different uh, percussive instruments of, I have a lot of percussive instruments. 
And and in the band, I, I also get to sing. You know, I get to sing uh, vocals, back background vocals uh, with Silvio and David, and that's a beautiful instrument, you know, as well. So um, that that I love expressing and being able to share uh, in performances. So yeah, you know, it's it's we all we all have our part to play, you know, in 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 the circle, right? And so. Um, it could be a, a player of instruments, it could be a singer, it can be um, a dancer, uh, it can be a, a participant, just spectator, you know, that's that's a cool thing about flamenco, if you listen to flamenco and, and uh, um, you know, traditionally flamenco is played in like a, a, a just a, a jam circle. And so, you know, you, you have people that are just kind of sitting around uh, playing guitar, standing, playing palmas. Palmas are your palms, your hands, right? So that's another instrument. The stamping of the feet, you know, uh, that's another rhythmic, you know, percussive instrument. And just shouting out things, you know, ole, eso, suerga, you know, all these kinds of like ways, to, you know, to encourage, to express what you're feeling, you know, to, to acknowledge that you're listening um, and to participate in that kind of way. So you know, that's what's a cool thing about it is that, you know, music only very recently has it been segregated to be on the stage or the musicians and the audience is like separated. Traditionally, music has always been played in a circle, you know, and and as a group and as a participatory, I can't speak anymore, but where people participate and, <laughs> and you know in certain ways right and that's that's from the little kids you know and, and, you know naked to like you know the the grandparents and uh so i, I encourage those kinds of um interactions because it just allows this like it's very healing it's it's medicinal um it allows the connection allows the expression and and you no know, in a variety of ways so uh so yeah, the, and and you know the more that we can do that, the more I think it's it kind of is, is humanizing effect. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's so much to chew on. <laughs> I'm so excited! I do want to say that I have identified one of the many feels like one of the many reasons why I'm so attracted to the music that Maharaja Flamenco Trio offers to the world. And more specifically, also all the sounds I've heard you play throughout the years as percussionist, whether it was with the band or you jamming on your own, um, how you said it's an invitation for the world. And that's what has me hooked is that I get to travel through the sounds that you have offered in the, the past six years that I've known you and and I just want to express my gratitude around that because talk about not having to go pay a dollar to get on a plane but to still somatically cellularly body and mind emotion and spirit be somewhere else because you took me there and I love that I love it I love it yeah <laughs> yeah we got any questions Well, I have many questions, but the one that really popped in my mind is when you were talking about being a professor and that was part of you and then being the, mus the musician, that was another part of you. When you started to fuse them together, like what came to your mind? Do you, do you say, I'm going to talk to my boss and see if like they jump on board or I'm just gonna try it and see how it goes. Like, how was that fusion for you? Yeah, so I, I for me, because uh, being a, an educator of language, um, there's there's a good bit of autonomy, you know, in the in the classroom. So, um, you know, I think there's a lot of trust, you know, as far as my, my case was, there was a lot of trust there. I think it's, it is always a good idea if you can have, if you have a good relationship with your, with your boss uh, to to say, hey, this is what I'm thinking, you know, and and um, you know, just have a conversation around it. Uh, I find that if you can provide a good and it's necessary to to have a good like clear rationale 
you know, not just do it to do it, but just to have a, a, a clear rationale of like, how does it align with the goals of like what's going on? You know, if, if that's a class mm -hmm. or if it's a presentation or or whatever it is, you, you should align, you should have in mind what are the objectives of that space. And if it aligns, you know, well, then then that's great. You know, if it's supporting the alignment of reaching that objective, it's a no brainer because that's just going to make you more passionate about it. Your audience is going to feel, you know, whether that's your students or coworkers or whatever, whoever you're working with is going to feel that it's going to add to your motivation, you know, which any good boss mm -hmm. would want their, you know, employees, right, their staff, whatever yeah. to be motivated and mm -hmm. uh, and reduce burnout, you know, so so, you know, that's that's just that's just good practice of, of supporting well being. You know, um, in this case, it was like teacher well being, and at least to better, like you know, my case, student well being, because they enjoyed it. You know, it's bringing enjoyment right uh, to to the space as well, and yeah. so it's just a win win. You know, if you can, if once you kind of see that, you know, and you get over your, oftentimes we're our own worst. You know, like critic, yeah. or or we tell these stories, you know, to ourselves that are like don't even exist. They're our, our own fears. Um, mm -hmm. so I think it is nice to have like a conversation with colleagues and say, Hey, I'm thinking about doing this, you know, and once you can kind of vocalize it and start the conversation going, the creative juices start flowing and things, things start to kind of become clear on, on, uh, what you can do. Thank you. Yeah. And thank you for your music. <laughs> thank yeah. you. I have a question, but it may be a, a topic for a whole nother coffee talk. Um, <laughs> I'm taking notes, uh, maybe future. Yes, <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm curious about um, this uh, teaching English in other countries. Uh -huh. And you mentioned TEFL certificate. TEFL, teaching English as a foreign language. Um, oh, yeah. So you, uh, uh, can you talk more about that? Yeah, point us to a resource. <laughs> sure. Uh, to learn Caroline's more? website. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah. is it on your website? Yeah, no, there's, I, think, there's... I, I just made that assumption and answered that. Sorry, <laughs> to interrupt. He has the answer. There, I don't. <laughs> there, there are there are a lot of resources on my website. Caroline, is it Caroline or Caroline? Caroline. Caroline. So Caroline, um, where are you? Are you in Tallahassee? Yes. Yeah, so uh, I would say for Tallahassee specifically, um, I started the TEFL certificate program at the Center for Intensive English Studies, CIES, at Florida State University. So that certificate is still available there if you want to, you know, explore that. I know through um, the uh, city of Tallahassee, through Leon County, <clears throat> there are opportunities to you know either volunteer or actually teach for pay uh english language learners um in tallahassee and the surrounding areas uh, it's adult um english language learners and so yeah i think those two kind of places would be you know cis for the tefl certification actually i do teacher education as well for um teachers of adult uh, English language learners. I, I teach professional development courses for the state of Florida. And, um, and so that's a big need. You know, there are a lot of um, adults who need support, you know, with their English language. They're, they're, they've either been in the country in the US for a long time and, and they, they're just busy, you know, and they, they uh, need support with developing uh, their English language for gaining employment or, or just, you know, their day to day conversation as well as newcomers, you know, that, that need that kind of support. So it's a pretty cool job to support and help people out, you know, and, and again, you learn so much, you know, I mean, amazing people, you know, from all around the world that you get to learn from and, and, and help out. It sounds like a, a great way to learn about other cultures and be, yes. of, and be of use at the same time. And, <laughs> That's you right. know, uh, di different from, regular traveling for just leisure to I'm thinking travel of course we have a lot of refugees and immigrants in Tallahassee so that you yeah. could there would be opportunities for people here to teach folks that are here but also 
to get the training to go travel to another country and have a more immersive experience learning the culture while being of service and not just a tourist, you know? Definitely. It sounded very appealing. When you mentioned that, I thought, huh, why have I not thought of this before? And of course, I'm not really in a position to do it myself right now in my life, but I know people who might be, and maybe they have not considered this. Yeah, absolutely. And you can also always send them my way or to CIS, you know, as a, a resource. Um, I will say also, you know, there's a lot of there are a lot of uh, virtual opportunities, too. So if it's something where you wanted to teach online, you know, to students in, I don't know, Costa Rica or something like that, you know, you could do that. And uh, so there are a lot of opportunities, there's a lot of need. And um, it's just, yeah, all those resources are there. And like I said, now with virtual learning being, you know, people are a lot more comfortable with it. That was one kind of positive thing I think that came out of the pandemic was that it's, it's, it's made these kind of like interactions kind of more normal, you know, cause we got, we all kind of got more comfortable with, with this. And so, um, yeah, all those, you know, it's all there, all those opportunities are there. And that's a great way to, to explore, uh, you know, right around your own neighborhood, you know, your own community, as well as the world. I have a quick question. I don't know if it's quick, but the question is, uh, how do you learn the beat of music? I mean, Nia teaches that a lot and we do this and I just can't get it sometimes. Mm -hmm. My body doesn't move to the same beat. You know, I'm 70, I'm going to be 72. And wow, so, beautiful. yeah, and so <laughs> my body doesn't move the same way as when I was taking Nia. Yeah. Even well, though I yeah. So how do you yeah. learn? Well, I'll say, Susan, you must be doing something right because you look amazing, you know, and and um, so, you know, I'll say follow your own beat, whatever that is, it's working for you. Um, you know, as far as like music, you know, I was just talking, I would, I have a cajon here and uh, we were listening. A great way to practice music is to listen to music. So, um, you know, listening to a music it's it's a nice practice is like mindfulness listening to music and what that means is like just like listen you know and try to listen to like okay what are the different instruments here right it's almost like you have like a mixing board and you can like turn up the the percussion and say okay that's what the this is what let's listen to what the drummer is doing you know and just focus on that and then let's let's focus on like what the guitar is doing, what the bass is doing, or what the flute is doing. So it's pretty cool. We actually have like this amazing capacity as human beings. To, you know, it's like being in a bar, for example. It's really loud, and we can focus on what the person is saying. We can kind of mute out other you know sounds, and we can focus on a sound that we choose to listen to. So that's like a great practice there is just being a mindful listener. And that's gonna deepen your experience of listening to music in incredible ways, right? So, so being a mindful listener. Now with rhythm, um, again, you know what I said with about the heartbeat. So every, every song, there's gonna be uh, a beat. And oftentimes the beat or the rhythm is gonna sound complex, but it, it, you can simplify it. Right, so there's always going to be boom, boom, right? So wherever that kind of comes back to, that's where you focus on. So let's say we're, we're here, have a rhythm that's like, oh, this is a great example. I was listening to, um, I was learning uh, Brazilian music. And, uh, and so when you hear Brazilian music, um, like bossa nova, or you, uh, you know, you listen to uh, uh, different kind of Afro-Brazilian music. You hear this, boom, 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 chick, boom, boom, chick, boom, chick, boom, boom, chick, boom, boom, chick, boom, 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 boom right so it's that that heartbeat right so that's you can hear that you can always you can if you can feel that like even if it's just one rhythm one beat 
bring it to the simplest form and that's home right that's where that home is and then from there it, it gets more complicated but it's really it's not that complicated once you can figure out where that anchor is where that compass is and from there you can always step back you know when you're dancing you can step back into that one you know you can step back into that home beat and you can improvise around that home beat um I, val you know i was noticing you doing that like with listening to the album and uh you're able to kind of like feel the what's what's happening you know rhythmically in the music and then you're also able to know what's coming you know and so it's it's like what is the emotion in the song you know where where is it is it building where is it taking like a rest and a break and and being able to kind of like listen to music in that way is is beautiful because you know you don't even have to play music to like get it but you do have to like develop an ear for listening to to those things in music and uh and once you get that, you just you you can listen to a song over and over and just have a way deeper kind of appreciation for it. Um, but other than that, Susan, I, you know, I would say if you have like a drum circle or something, you know, like that that you can attend uh, that's around you, or if you do you have a drum at home, <laughs> yeah. So so you know a drum is a really nice instrument. I always say like everyone should have a drum in their home, and, uh, and that could be like a djembe kind of drum, or it could be like a cajon, you know, something like that. Um, you can you can use your body. Yeah. You can. You're right. You can clap. I mean, this, these things are amazing percussive instruments, right? You can sing, right? So that's, that's, those are things that are accessible that you can start playing around with. And I think that's going to help to kind of make that like connection here. And then that'll translate to, to how you move as well. Yeah. I, sorry, go ahead, Susan. I was going to say, you know, I think I get in my way because when we were in Mia, they say, well, listen, listen to the instrument. And I'm thinking, so what is that instrument? What is that? I don't know what, you know, and so I'm missing the whole thing. So if I just listen to the beat instead of trying to figure out which instrument, just know that it's a different instrument. Who cares what the name is? Right. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Keep it simple. Keep it simple. I say put a kiss, kiss it, you know, keep it simple. Keep it simple and, and short, you know. <laughs> I, I'd love to add to that and say that um, in my experience working with Felices Diaz, the first thing I did was exactly that mindful listening. So I was listening to it in the shower, cooking. I mean, Travis is still on the he knows this. I'm plugged in and I'm sorry, Travis. I'm so <laughs> I'm so motivated and so obscenely inspired by all the sounds that are coming through, especially in that album specifically, that it I can I can relate to what you're saying, Susan, where it's like, whoa, where do I take my body? But then to come bring it back to what Raming is um beautifully describing, and I, I love that he brought it into the heartbeat, is again, this concept of bringing it to the compass, and there's no way that your compass is going to receive and be like the way my compass is too. So with that, um, finding what you feel and interpret as your heartbeat in that sound and in that music, you roll with that, girlfriend, because that is you connecting truly in your fashion and in your way. Um, and there may be others that may have a, a different uh, approach to that, um, probably like very um, professional dancing that it has to be a certain way and you've got to make it on certain counts. But from a jamming and just experimenting standpoint, I think it's valuable to just know that that there's a reason why people say dance to the drum, like to your own beat or what, what is that phrase? Dance to the beat of your own drum. The right, exactly. Which yeah. is, it's unique to you. Yeah. And then listening to the layers, because there's so many layers, um, was a fascinating and challenging task at hand, by the way, Rami. 
with yeah. the licencias. I loved the whole process. It, it was um, invested all month, invested <laughs> in the music. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you for investing that time. You know, we, it's, oh, yeah. it's, nice, it's nice to have someone to appreciate it at that level. And uh, yeah, because, you know, we obviously invested a lot of time in there. And yeah, it's it's a lot of, I, th I think that's just slowing down, you know, it's it's kind of like, taking time to savor something, you know, like savor what you're eating and uh, savoring the experience and just, you know, the, in this world of like, which is great, it's great that we can access things so conveniently and so easily. But what tends to happen is we can like devalue, you know, things. And, um, and that can be like devaluing the arts, devaluing the food, devaluing like the creative process and the creators, um, you know, and, and that, that's what makes us human, you know, is, is, is these sensory experiences and, and connecting in that kind of way. So, you know, I'm all about the technology, but I think that we have to be intentional and mindful of bringing balance. <clears throat> to that, you know, when you have all that goodness, right, of, of, of technology and access, <clears throat> we have to be more mindful of, uh, of bringing balance by taking the time, you know, to, to chew, to chew on things, to savor it, to taste it, to enjoy it, you know, whether it be in conversations or uh, dancing, you know, while you're cooking and listening to the music, you know, and just just taking the time to just just enjoy and and when you can do that you just get so much more juice out of everything um and it's just more enjoyable it's that's a depth you know a richness of experience uh that that just makes life in my opinion more more beautiful i love that miss margie did did you have anything to add before we close space <laughs> I'm here. I was been listening. <laughs> um, there's, there's a lot. This was a lot. So th this is good. Um, for me, a lot. But I was journaling before we started about some other stuff that I've been. Anyway, the compass thing. Okay, so that that was big because for me on many levels. Um, I don't guess I need to go into how come and why. And at the same time, the part about the compass, it brought me to my solar plexus. And um, as I was journaling about things in my life that got me away from my awareness of of my sense of being, my my real sense of being, my solar plexus. So anyway, you would never know this, but something like that that came out, out of this conversation. And in music, I know about music. I have a degree in music and and all that. And and going back to the mm, the seed of the music. Anyway, I'm kind of rambling now. The compass was good. <laughs> <laughs> Margie, I, I hear you. And, uh, you know, when I hear you, what you're saying is that, and a lot of what we've been talking about too is, you know, really like our connection, you know, our connection to like our ancestors too, right? And uh, lineage, you know, a lot of ha that has to do with solar plexus as far as grounding us in, in mm -hmm. who we are and um and you know connecting us you know to that like grounding of of feeling safe you know fe feeling that you know we are intuitive selves right our gut kind of instincts yeah and, yeah. Uh, yeah so so you know those are things that are whew, you know it's it's we're, it's a for me it's it's always like a um so important to always like check in with your compass you know like what uh -huh. what is what are your values like what is important to you and there's so much i mean you get on youtube i'm a youtube junkie there's so many there's a thousand people telling you like what you should do or shouldn't do what's going to happen what's not going to happen and you know some of it's good information some of it's just them you know 
doing their thing, right? So, but at the end of the day, we have to take the time to check in with ourselves to know, you know, where we need to do, what we need to do, what, what feels yeah. right to us. And, uh, and that gets to that Brolga, you know, story too, right? And she was, she was dancing her, her song, you know, she was dancing to her beat, <laughs> right? Yeah. And, uh, and she was, you know, and, and that story also says that she, you know, other versions of that story says that she was kind of outcasted, you know? uh from the community because some people didn't get like you know what she was doing it was like she was just dancing she's not hunting she's not gathering she's not you know you know helping out getting married you know kind of the things that were expected but she was which which was different and so but she you know at the end of the day was a reminder that you have to just like listen to um your gut you know that you have to listen to what yeah, uh, you your purpose, you know, is um, we all have, in my belief, you know, we have our, our purpose, right. And so when you can align, you know, just kind of like what we were saying here, Roxy, you know, like aligning with the objectives of your purpose, right. Uh, I like that. I like that <laughs> the way you tied that in yeah. to Roxy's question. My first my first Thing that popped up after Roxy's question regarding the blending of, I'll say, two passions, two worlds, mm -hmm. is it seeps through naturally. And at the same time, I mean, when you brought it back down to the pinnacle of, does it align with the purpose? Mm -hmm. So that was good. There were many brilliant moments yeah. in this conversation. Thank you, dear. Thank yeah, you. I appreciate it very Thank much, um, Valerie and Ramin, um, and everybody that was present here today. Thank you. Thank you. She's one of my teachers, too. That's beautiful. I teach her resilience. <laughs> like you, you can't give up. <laughs> <laughs> Damaris, thank you for joining us from Miami. I saw you trickled in. Um, if you, We were sharing earlier how we were feeling being here, and I know that you jumped in a little bit later, but I just want to acknowledge your presence. And uh, she had an opportunity to experience the dance yesterday to Felices Diaz. Um, I'm not sure if she is able to unmute and give two cents, maybe a few words of how you felt, or if you have anything you want to share briefly before we close space. Sure, uh, let me, um, well, actually, I believe I didn't get the message completely because I came late. Yeah. I believe it's, uh, you were talking about music. Is that correct? <laughs> music? We talked about a lot of things. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but let me concern in the music. And actually, I guess music is life. I mean, um, I guess in my second life, I will be a dancer. But <laughs> in reality, I become an accountant. So numbers is my life. But I guess that, you know, if you communicate your life with the music, I believe uh, music is an inspiration, make you to a life better in the way that you're feeling and the way you're going to react with people as well. So I guess, uh, you know, the dancing re re reference to yesterday. So I guess uh, exercise is life. I guess uh, music is everything, I believe. Whoever doesn't, and who doesn't listen to a music, and actually you do move your body in any way that uh, actually it will be healthy. And then uh, mm -hmm. you you communicate with the body, you communicate with the mind. And actually in between of that is music, exercise, and I guess it's everything I believe. I might be wrong, but yeah, that's what I think. <laughs> we, we own our truth here. That's why it's a safe space for it. Mr. Travis, anything to, to share or say? I don't know if he's plugged in. Okay. Well, I um I I want to to make sure, Mr. Ramin, that there isn't anything else you may want to to share or say, and and let's keep it open. You know, we never really know um, how these dialogues continue to stay as open portals, and we do have the the gift of communication such as email and social media if you're into it and then there's good old phone calls too by the way you guys they still exist <laughs> phone calls exist <laughs> but um 
it's it's a lot to ponder and i'm personally like super fascinated by a lot of what came up and i could not be happier about how spirit nature and music itself the music of our words and our way of expressing and communicating what we want to share with each other how that actually took the flow of our talk um, so i'm i feel honored and and gifted really that shamin you are a human that embodies that i see i feel like i see you moving through life that way too and it really does inspire me greatly so i'm thankful for your commitment to teaching and learning I would put both of those there, teaching and learning and your willingness to do it in public through every stage you step on, through every call that you take, every webinar that you facilitate, which by the way, I watched one and I, I'm fascinated by what you're doing. Um, and by this, by sharing yourself so authentically with us and giving us two hours of your day, I can barely believe 40 minutes turned almost into two one and a half hours, sorry. We were on a lot earlier, but uh, it's every second is worth the listen. So thank you for you guys tuning in. Um, I wanna acknowledge your presence. If you're here live, uh, know that it's, it's valued and appreciated. And if you're catching the recording, we also value and appreciate your diligence and commitment to listen and tune in with us at any time of the day that works for you. Um, I'd like to go ahead and close space and Nia, we do this thing where we just woo, we make an audio sound three times and we just put it out there and we just close it up. Is there anything you want to add, Mr. Ramin, before we do that? <laughs> Let's woo it up. Let's woo it up. <laughs> We're going to woo it up. You could stand if you'd like. You could stay seated. I'm going to go ahead and just get up. And I'm going to say one, two, three. Woo! And we got two more. Woo! Woo! And one big one for you. Have a great day. Woo! <laughs> Thank you. Well, fun experience. Thank you so much, Ramin. And thank you for your time and your spirit and your presence in this lifetime and all that is to come. Thank you, everybody.